allow me to start this video by freely admitting my biases. I love whales. Uh, honestly, they're probably in the top five animals of all time. If you take them as a whole, it would be like whales, cephalopods, corvids, jellyfish, and I guess maybe primates. Primates would eke their way in, but only because humans were the only species to invent tacos. But honestly, I bet the only reason whales didn't invent tacos is because tacos taste like trash when they're underwater. I bet that whales have come up with some bomb ass food that's just as good as tacos, but can be munched underwater. And the only reason why we don't know about it is because they don't want us to know. It's just for them. So I love whales because they're amazing. They have an intelligence that scientists are only just now beginning to understand. They include the largest animals on our planet and just seeing them in their natural habitat is seriously enough to bring me to tears. Uh, I went snorkeling at Malakini Crater uh, earlier this year and some humpbacks got so close to our raft that we had to cut the engines and just hope they didn't decide to flip us over for fun. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I already knew that whales are an essential part of our ecosystem, but this week I learned a new fact that completely blew me away because I had never even considered it before. It turns out that whales are extremely good at removing carbon from the atmosphere. Uh, usually you think of trees as being the big way to combat carbon naturally. Uh, but whales are actually even better than trees at removing carbon for a number of different reasons. The biggest issue is that whales encourage the growth of phytoplankton. Uh, phytoplankton are tiny oceanic plants that float around near the surface. Uh, like trees, they take in carbon from the atmosphere and they release oxygen. And in fact, uh, they provide 50 to 85% of all of the oxygen in our atmosphere. But it's hard for phytoplankton to grow in many places. Uh, for instance, in warmer water, they generally lack nitrogen and phosphorus because those nutrients are quite rare. Uh, and in colder water, they lack iron. Whales bring those nutrients to phytoplankton from the sea depths. Uh, they bring it up to the surface where the phytoplankton is. They do that in two ways. One is by diving and then zooming back up to the surface when we see them jumping through the air. Um, and two, they do it by shitting everywhere. Uh, whale poop, it turns out, uh, is the perfect fertilizer for phytoplankton. Uh, so sure enough, scientists have observed the fact that phytoplankton tends to grow along the migratory roots of whales. So whales help trap carbon by stimulating the growth of phytoplankton, but they also do it by being absolutely massive motherfuckers. Uh, whales eat and eat and eat, trapping the carbon in the things they're eating. They do poop some of that out, but the carbon in their poop tends to sink to the bottom of the sea, and it can stay there for dozens to hundreds of years. Uh, that's also what happens when whales die a natural death. Uh, they sink, taking all of the carbon they've trapped throughout their lives down to the ocean floor with them. And there it can become trapped in the seafloor for millions of years. That's exactly the plan that some technologists have come up with to solve the problem of carbon in our atmosphere. They say, let's come up with a way to trap carbon, uh, from the air and then put it deep underground where uh, it can't change the climate anymore. They want to do that with technology, but whales do that naturally. There's no need to build any robots or argue with any local governments about where we're going to shove all of this carbon. All we have to do is encourage the continued repopulation of whales. Of course, that means if we lose all the whales, we're absolutely fucked, just as predicted in that one Star Trek movie. You know, the only good one. Of course, whales can't drop to the sea floor with all that delicious carbon inside of them. 
uh, when they're being hunted and killed by humans. Not only did hunting whales uh, for a century or so completely fuck up our environment by removing way too many important organisms from the ecosystem, thus depleting the world's phytoplankton, but it also released a load of extra carbon into the atmosphere by not letting those whale carcasses sink to the bottom of the sea with all of their carbon inside of them. Andrew Pershing, a biologist at University of Maine, calculated that Whaling over the past century put about 110 million tons of carbon back into the atmosphere. Uh, that's the equivalent of cutting down all of the trees in New England. That's just from the lack of dead whales on the bottom of the sea, not counting their effect on phytoplankton and not counting the carbon required to power the ships that have hunted them. This was a study that he did back in 2010, and Pershing at that time suggested that we come up with carbon credits specifically for protecting whales and other animals that hold the bulk of marine vertebrate carbon. So this month, some economists took Pershing's idea to the next level. Researchers at the International Monetary Fund uh, calculated the actual cost of a single great whale. Considering the current going rate of carbon dioxide, the amount of carbon the average whale captures, and the amount each whale contributes to things like ecotourism and fishery populations, they came to a conservative figure of about $2 million per whale. Compare that to how much a whale fetches on the market for its meat. That's about $50,000. In monetary terms, then, a whale is worth about 40 times more alive than dead. It is, of course, really gross that we even need to consider how much money a whale is worth, considering that money is just some stupid bullshit that humans made up to torture ourselves. A whale is priceless, but we live in a society, and that society is capitalist. Uh, so we cannot make important decisions about things until, unfortunately, we have assigned them a monetary value. The economists write that if whales were allowed to return to their pre-whaling numbers, capturing 1.7 billion tons of CO2 annually, it would be worth about $13 per person a year to subsidize these whales' CO2 sequestration efforts. That would be worth it to me, personally, uh, considering that on average each American spent about $3,456 to fund the military in 2017 alone. The researchers are pushing for the 190 signers of the Paris Agreement to pledge to spend that money on whale conservation. Uh, it's both economical and it would go a long way towards slowing down climate change. Of course, I should point out that that's going to be 189 signers of the Paris Agreement since Donald Trump just this week confirmed that he's going to pull the United States out of it. But hey, maybe Congress will impeach him before he can do that. Or maybe he'll just get distracted by something shiny, like a nice shiny impeachment. 